not. It's just an ordinary crabby. Oh my goodness! Full disclosure, I wasn't planning on making a video on this movie, um, but then I watched it. Shazam! Fury of the Gods is a pointless side quest. That is really the best way for me to describe this movie to you guys. It is a textbook superhero movie. Never in my life have I seen a movie that felt more auto-generated than Shazam! Fury of the Gods. If you asked an AI to produce a superhero movie, you would get this movie. It's not good, it's not bad, it is perfectly fine. Now, it's not like I didn't expect this going in because none of the trailers for this movie led me to believe that it would actually be good. The marketing team for this movie needs to be studied. I'm so serious. I have never seen a marketing team perfectly, carefully craft the most mid-looking trailers of all time. They really found a way to manufacture the most unhypable movie ever. The marketing team gave us some unfinished CGI action sequences, threw some Drake over it, and really thought the people would go feral for it. Now, look, I already knew this movie was going to be a waste of time, and not just because of the painfully average trailers, which definitely took at least three years off of my life. No, I knew this movie was going to be a waste of time, because this movie is coming out in probably the most awkward time of the DC franchise. We are at the tail end of the DCEU, if you can still even call it that, and we are just now entering the James Gunn universe. So this movie was destined for failure. It was inevitable. And honestly, that's what I was most hyped for walking into this movie. I was hyped to see just how pointless it would really be. And my god, it is somehow way worse than I expected. At the time of writing the script, it is currently 1am. I just got out of the theater, so I apologize if this video ends up going all over the place, I'm barely still conscious. But it is vital that I tell you guys as quickly as possible just how spectacularly mid and pointless this movie is. So here we go. Also, I will be talking about spoilers, but since the trailers basically already showed the entire movie, there's not much to spoil. One glaring issue with this movie is that it relies heavily on plot contrivances to push the story forward. There is one scene in particular where it's really bad, like they weren't even trying to hide it. So basically, after this fight with Helen Mirren's character, they take her back to their lair. They put her in this cage, and then just leave her. And then she escapes. And everyone's just like... Uh-oh. First of all, they just saw this lady use telekinesis to wrap electrical wire around our heroes. So why the hell do they think that she couldn't escape from a metal cage? They don't even put anyone on duty to watch her. They just throw her in there and then a minute later she takes this MacGuffin from their lair and leaves. It all happens way too fast. And then, and this was the most insulting part, they give us a line to try and justify this scene's existence. And they say that she wanted to get caught so she could steal the MacGuffin. First of all, no, she didn't. So apparently actively trying to brutally murder children is considered wanting to be captured now. The only reason she got caught is because Billy outsmarted her. This whole scene felt like that one scene in The Dark Knight when the Joker gets caught if they removed everything good about it. Another one of my biggest issues with Shazam! Fury of the Gods is that none of the side plots go anywhere. For starters, there's this really weird dynamic between Billy and the older girl I don't know her name and I honestly don't care enough to look it up, so we'll just call her Shazam. So Shazam has this talk with Billy about the foster care system, which by the way, I think it's so funny how the older actress for Shazam from the first movie just got completely axed off and no one mentions it. Like, people were going feral on Twitter about this casting change from Ant-Man, but no one cares about this. I feel really bad for that actress, whoever she was, but also I think this character was pretty underutilized in the first movie, so I don't hate this change and I'm glad she's in it more. I just think it's really funny how they don't even mention it. So anyway, they have this weird conversation about how Billy is gonna age out of the foster care system soon and will be kicked out of the family. Which makes absolutely zero sense because Shazam already has aged out of the system too, and she hasn't been kicked out yet. So what was the point of this scene? And then Billy literally brings this up later to his mom, and she's just like, no, of course you can stay with us. So side plot resolved, I guess? Yay? Kind of makes Shazam look like a jerk for even suggesting that he would get dropped by his new parents, but okay. And then there's this other side plot about how everyone in the family wants to do their own thing, and Billy is trying to keep them fighting crime together. Which, you know, maybe could have worked if they would have shown it to us at all. 
The only reason I know that this plotline exists is because Billy tells that to his pediatrician in the opening exposition scene. If you cut out that one line, I would have no idea that this was a thing in the movie, which is crazy to me, because they really try and play it up as one of the biggest plot lines in the movie. But no, the first big action sequence to go with them at the bridge, they're all doing the mission together. So Billy's one job throughout this movie, keeping everyone together, is resolved before it's even set up. I mean, yeah, the one bit they do show us that they may be a dysfunctional team is that off screen, they couldn't keep the bridge from collapsing. But who cares? <laughs> they saved everyone. That is quite literally the only job of being a superhero. If they wanted us to feel like this is a dysfunctional team, they could have killed off some people, but they can't do that. And you know why they can't do that? Because then you can't have the unfunny banter of the team in the lair after that. You see the problem here? They're trying to have their cake and eat it too. You can't make me believe that this team needs fixing if there is nothing they need to fix. You need to have them go through serious consequences to make me believe that, but they won't include serious consequences because this is also supposed to be a comedy. And you can't show people brutally dying and then cut to scenes of the younger kid talking about Skittles. And really, the only one in the team that wants to do his own thing is Freddy. But he has shown throughout the entire movie, time and time again, that he is perfectly capable of fighting crime on his own. So who cares? If they pulled a 2007 TMNT, which yes, that is the most niche reference I can make here, and Billy was concerned about Freddy getting caught and endangering their family, then I would believe it. But no, he just doesn't want people doing their own thing because he's a jerk, I guess? Look, I get what they're going for here. They're trying to say that since Billy has been abandoned by both his mom and dad, he's worried about getting abandoned by his new family too. But if you are going to talk about real world things like abandonment issues, then you can't just talk about it in passing. You have to really dive deep into Billy's psyche and show that to us so we believe it. And you have to treat those issues seriously. But this movie's tone is so lighthearted that it doesn't allow that to happen. That's like trying to incorporate real world issues like cancer into a movie that has bad jokes every five seconds. I think you know what I'm talking about. Another really painful thing I noticed about this movie is just how unfunny the dialogue is. Zachary Levi and Jack Dylan Grazer are really carrying the humor in this movie. But I hate to say it, even they're not enough to save it somehow, which really just goes to show how unfunny some of these lines were. To me, there is a certain anatomy to a good joke, and it is quantifiable. A good joke is split into two parts. 50% is the written joke itself, and the other 50% is the delivery. The main issue with the humor in Shazam Fury of the Gods is that it mostly relies on the delivery of these jokes rather than the jokes themselves. I will say there are a few good ones, like when Helen Mirren is reading the letter that the magic pen wrote, but the majority of jokes are just Zachary Levi and Jack Dylan Grazer monologuing, and it's just passably funny. Nothing too crazy. The villains in this movie are also just painfully average. Now, I didn't watch Black Adam because I don't hate myself, but I thought that they would have at least mentioned him in this movie since, I don't know, he's like the main villain for Shazam in the comics. Not including Black Adam in this movie just increases this movie's pointlessness to an exponential level because then we're just left with these random people who no one cares about. And like, I don't know, I feel like they could have maybe done something interesting with these villains. I mean, it kind of is a movie about family versus family, so there is some potential there, but they just don't do anything with it. Their motivations are really boring and only barely even mentioned at the food truck scene. It would have been way more interesting if they were trying to prove something to their father so that there's some kind of deep motivation here, but they barely even talk about their father, so who cares? They're just generic video game villains. Which sucks, because their first scene in the movie was honestly really cool. That museum scene where Lucy Liu, who throughout the entire movie really is just a backstabbing snake, Sorry, it was too easy. But when she turns all those people into zombies, I thought it was really awesome and intense. Kind of makes you feel like they don't even need the magical staff to take over the world, but whatever. These villains start off the movie really menacing in that scene and then never get to that level again. The only somewhat interesting character in the sister trio is Rachel Ziegler's character, who builds this relationship with Jack Dylan Grazer. And I would have bought this if they had more than like five minutes of screen time together. In one scene, she's talking about all these great things about Freddie Freeman but she's barely known him. And this isn't even her pretending to be good. Those were real compliments she was saying about Freddy. It just doesn't come off as genuine even though it's supposed to be. Although I will say that reveal scene was by far the best scene in the movie. The way Rachel Zegler tries to get him out of there before her sisters come, then Lucy Liu uses her mind control powers to make the teacher jump off the roof, it was all really well done. It had the most tension of any scene by far. 
way better than anything in the third act, which, my god, we have to talk about that. This was one of the lamest third acts I have ever seen. There was absolutely zero tension whatsoever. First of all, it starts with this big emotional moment with Billy and his mom, which had a lot of potential. I really like the moment where she asked to see him as the real Billy, not his superhero form, but it's just not done well at all. The first Shazam movie has a much better emotional scene. When he goes to see his mom and realizes that she doesn't care about him, so he flees to the people who do care about him. It was really well done for two reasons. One, because it had been set up since the beginning and searching for his mom was an active part of Billy's character, and two, the action hadn't started yet so we had time for an emotional scene like this. But here, this moment isn't earned because it hasn't been set up. This is like the only scene between Billy and his mom in this movie, so it's really hard to care. They didn't properly devote time to Billy's abandonment issues, so it just comes off as so half-baked. And also, it's really hard to take a scene this long seriously when there are literally people getting brutally murdered right next to them and no one cares. Also, it's kind of laughable how they just ran out of things for these characters to do in the third act. At this point in the movie, Billy is the only only one who has powers, so the rest of them just have to go on random side quests that do nothing for the plot. Like the kids tell the parents to get people to safety and leave them in the car, which is very out of character for both parties here. Like I do not buy that they would separate at all. And then the rest of the kids just ride unicorns and ram into these monsters, which I'm not sure what it is with directors and thinking that riding horses in the third act is epic but it's not. And also, at this point in the movie, they are literally just normal kids, so I do not buy that they would survive this entire city getting attacked by these monsters. I guess it was the power of the Skittles, which, good god, how much did they spend on that product placement? Never have I seen a real-life product so integral to the plot since Krispy Kreme and the Power Rangers movie, which, yeah, checks out. But you know what? That's not even the worst part of the third act. The worst part of the third act is how they do a cheap fake-out death for no reason. First of all, Billy tries to spin his all-or-nothing quote into justifying sacrificing himself, which I think is the complete opposite of that point, but okay. And then they do this whole death scene with Billy, but I just didn't feel anything because I knew he wasn't actually dead. If they would have killed him off, that would have been pretty cool. But actually, then it would have just pissed me off even more because how are you going to kill off Shazam before he even meets Black Adam? You see why this death scene was pointless? There was no way this was actually going to mean anything. But you know what pisses me off the most? Not the death scene itself, but the way he gets revived. Wonder Woman just spawns in out of nowhere, and they blast her theme from BVS, which, thank god it wasn't the one from the center cuts, but she just randomly comes in and revives him, which, by the way, where the hell was she during that third act? So, anyway, Billy is fine now. So, what was the point of that 10 minute death sequence, you might ask? I have no idea. It's pointless, is what it is. But you don't even know Pointless until you watch this movie's end credit sequences. Let me tell you. I will say, the first one was actually pretty cool because they brought back the people from Peacemaker, and I guess Shazam is gonna join the Justice Society or whatever, which, <clears throat> yeah, we'll see about that. But you wanna know the post credit scene that really cracks me up? The second one. Because, and I am not kidding, it is quite possibly the biggest waste of time ever put to screen. So Mark Strong comes back, which if I had a nickel for every time Mark Strong was in a post credit scene that went nowhere, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Anyway, Mark Strong gets visited by the worm again, and I'm not kidding, they literally have the exact same conversation from the post credit scene in the first movie. Almost a one to one ratio. There is zero new information that gets revealed. The worm just shows up to remind the audience that he still exists and then leaves for no reason again. Yay? But you know what? The feeling I felt after this post credit scene kind of sums up how I feel about this entire movie. It's just a big waste of time. Look, Shazam Fury of the Gods isn't horrible. It's perfectly fine. I watched this with my friends and there was like no one else in the theater, which <laughs> again, checks out. So I had a pretty good time laughing at some of the stupid moments with them. But I'm writing this script just after seeing it and I'm already starting to forget about what happened, which just goes to show how meaningless it was. The CGI was also pretty bad. I mean, there were some cool things about it. I really liked Rachel Zegler's powers, but for the most part, it's just a mess to look at. I'm not gonna act like the CGI in the first movie was good either, but it used it pretty sparingly, so it didn't bother me as much. But here, 
it's all you look at. So it's just not something I would be inclined to watch again. I will say there were some standout performances, specifically from Jack Dylan Grazer. His acting was actually really good in this movie. I want to see him in some good DC movies because I think he could do really well in them. You know what I want? I want to see him in a James Gunn DC movie. That would be awesome. But apart from him, there wasn't much to write home about. And as it stands now, this movie is something I will forget about in a few days. It's completely harmless. But, you know, sometimes you want to just turn your brain off for a few hours and watch a harmless movie, and this movie will certainly give you that. No more, no less. Honestly, the best thing about this movie is that it gave me motivation to make another video essay. I've been pretty busy with film school, and I'm actually on spring break right now, which is why I'm back home shooting this. Uh, so I haven't had much time for YouTube, but every now and then, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to come back to this.